Colleen. This is my rescue cat, King Louie, and we're from Orange County, California. My question is regarding Anne Seymour, the Duchess of Somerset, the wife of Edward Seymour, the Duke of Somerset. On the television series, The Tudors, Anne Seymour behaves rather scandalously, having affairs, one being with her brother-in-law, Edward Seymour. She claims he fathered her child. Is there any truth to this storyline? Thanks, Claire. Thank you so much to Colleen for the excellent question on Anne Seymour, nay Stanhope, wife of Edward Seymour, the man who would, of course, become Duke of Somerset and Lord Protector in his nephew King Edward VI reign. Now, in the Tudors series, the Showtime series, Anne, played by actress Emma Hamilton, is a rather colourful character, and that's putting it mildly. Her marriage to Edward Seymour is an unhappy one, and in season three of the series, she cheats on him with Sir Francis Bryan, having sex with Bryan behind a tapestry with Seymour nearby, then, in season four, she's pursued by Henry Howard, Earl of Surrey, but refuses to become his mistress. Then, while her husband is away campaigning in the Scottish borderlands, she has an affair with his brother, Thomas Seymour, and even has a son by him, who she names Thomas. So, is any of that true? Was Anne Stanhope like that, or Anne Seymour, if you want to call her her married name? In brief, no. So I could leave it there, but actually I want to explain a bit more about Anne. Anne married Edward Seymour in around early 1535 as his second wife, and the couple had 10 children together, quite a few. Seymour was, of course, brother of Queen Jane Seymour and uncle to King Edward VI, to whom he acted as Lord Protector until his fall. There is nothing, absolutely nothing, in the contemporary sources to even suggest that Anne was unfaithful to Edward Seymour. And although some have linked her to the wolf in one of Henry Howard, Earl of Surrey's poems, the poem is about a lady who refused to dance with him. Perhaps the Tudors, the series, uh, was inspired by that and exaggerated it to her refusing to be his mistress. But Anne was a pious reformer, a member of Queen Catherine Parr's privy chamber and a circle of evangelical women close to the Queen. So it's rather sad that Anne's been maligned in this way. Here are a few facts about Anne. Anne was the daughter and only child of Sir Edward Stanhope and his second wife, Elizabeth Boucher. Anne and her husband, Edward Seymour, acted as chaperones in 1536 when King Henry VIII wanted to spend time with Jane Seymour. Anne was a lady to Queens Catherine Howard and Catherine Parr, but as historian Susan James points out, her employment as a Queen's lady dated all the way back to Catherine of Aragon's time as Queen. In the Tudor series, Anne gives Protestant martyr Anne Askew a bag of gunpowder to tie it around her neck so that her suffering at her burning will be shortened. Although that is fictional, Anne did know Anne Askew and supported her by giving her money in 1545. Anne Askew was racked to try and get her to give names of women close to the Queen who supported her, but she refused to name anyone. English cleric and reformer Thomas Beacon described Anne Seymour as a lady of notable godliness and of singular pity towards the poor members of Christ. Like her husband, Anne did not agree with the secret marriage of her brother-in-law, Thomas Seymour, and Catherine Parr, and it brought the two couples into conflict. Anne was the wife of the Lord Protector of England, the man in charge, and as Susan James notes, she appears to have considered herself first lady in the kingdom, and therefore to have precedence over the dowager queen Catherine Parr. One source states that she even refused to hold Catherine's train and that she took her place at Matins. Sir John Haywood, in his 16th century work on King Edward VI, wrote of Anne's hatred for her sister-in-law 
and that she was accustomed to abuse her in the grossest terms, saying things like, did not Henry VIII marry Catherine Parr in his doting days when he'd brought himself so low by his lust and cruelty that no lady that stood on her honour would venture on him? And shall I now give place to her who in her former estate was but Latimer's widow and is now fain to cast herself for support on a younger brother? If Master Admiral teach his wife no better manner, I am she that will. Catherine and Thomas were also angry that the Lord Protector had Catherine's jewels and was refusing to give them to her. They'd been given to Catherine by King Henry VIII and the Lord Protector viewed them as crown property, while Catherine and her husband argued that they were personal gifts. After Catherine Parr's death in 1548, though, Anne did take charge of Catherine's infant daughter Mary for a time before the little girl was put into the care of the Duchess of Suffolk. Anne was a literary patron and had works by the likes of Thomas Beacon, Edward Crane, Ephraim Paget, and John Old dedicated to her. Anne was imprisoned in the Tower of London for a time in 1551 after her husband's fall. The Lord Protector was executed in 1552, but Anne survived and was released after Queen Mary I's succession. Even though they had very different religious views, Anne had always been close to Mary. In 1558, Anne married her late husband's steward, Francis Newdigate, who ended up being interrogated in 1564 regarding his support of the claim to the throne of Anne's daughter-in-law, Lady Catherine Grey. On the 16th of April 1587, Anne died at Hanworth, a manor that Mary I had granted to her back in 1558. She was laid to rest at Westminster Abbey. Anne Stanhope may have been proud and perhaps domineering, but she was also pious, a literary patron, and far from the she-wolf man-eater of the Tudor series. And now a bit of trivia. Although Anne doesn't appear to have been unfaithful to her husband, Edward Seymour's first wife has been linked to scandal. Her name was Catherine Philol or Filiol, and she had two sons by Edward, John and Edward. It has been said that Edward repudiated Catherine due to her bad behaviour, an alleged affair with his father, Sir John Seymour, and that he didn't recognise John as his son. However, this story only dates back to the 17th century, and there's no mention of it in the 16th century sources. So actually, Catherine has been maligned too. A big thank you to Colleen for such a wonderful question that really made me explore the life of Anne Stanhope. It is so sad that some of these Tudor characters have been maligned by fiction and TV. Thank you, Colleen. You can subscribe to this channel by clicking around about there. You can hit the bell to be notified as these videos go live. You can give me a like and leave me a comment. I'll be back quite soon with another question from my viewers. See you then. Bye-bye.